Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Hope you're all well and um, ready to um, put a little bit of meat on these um, scrawny legs here at the moment. Nothing like fat chicken thighs. So if you watched part one, you will have seen these legs being made and there were different ways of covering them to make them more realistic. And I've chosen um, the florist tape covered legs to continue working on to make the standing chicken, which comes in three parts. That is the tutorial, not the chicken itself. The chicken will be all one piece. Um, where is she? Oh, she's here. Yeah, that's the chicken there. And um, the legs on her here, or the feet, I should say, they are the ones that are covered with, with glue. So that was another version of, of how to make the legs. So that's, um, that's how she is done. Oh, sorry. She's a bit, she's been on the gin already this morning. Naughty chicken. And um, of course, we've got a prize to give away as always. And um, today's prize is um, you get a, a small jar filled with um, spring colors of wool. So it's, we've stuffed it in as much as a big pile. There you go. So you could be making um, all kinds of exciting things. There's a wool top in there as well. There's some curls, more curls, lovely sort of springy colors. I can see primroses in there and blue skies and, um, and, a, and a tree that hasn't got the leaves yet. There's a bit of dragon mix in there, um, some cotton um some uh, drops um what's it called rainbow drops with cotton um spots in there in the green god that was a back to front way and that is the price for today and uh, what we need to know from you is um so as you know you can enter um the the competition even though it's not really a competition we're doing a complete random pick of names um who will be able um to take this away on the live stream today which is tuesday um the 16th of March 2021, but also when we repeat our live stream on Facebook at 7 p.m. on the 18th of March, you can also win exactly the same thing. So today's price is the jar, the sweetie jar. And all you need to do is just let us know what is your next craft project that is just waiting to hatch. So as it's Easter coming up, we're thinking about chicks and um I'd like to know, we'd all love to know what you are, um, what plans you are hatching for your next craft project. Ideally needle felting, that would be amazing. But if it's not needle felting, tell us anyway what you're doing. And that will um, will give you a chance to win one of these um, sweetie jars that I've just poured out in front of you. And of course, Emma is at the other end supporting. And I'm just going to have a quick check who's here today watching. Um, so we have got... Let's just see who we've got. Um, we have got Natasha is here. She was the first. Hey, hi, Natasha. Um, Diane is there and um, Rachel with Daniel. Um, and Ava is there, Sandra, Carol, Dawn. Um, and Laura is there, Michael, Diana, Erica, Joe is there, Rebecca. Um, another Carol, Faith is there, Jane is there, saying hello, Donna is there, um, Angela is there, Amanda is there, and Denise is there. So make sure you give us the thumbs up um, on this uh, particular stream. That's the little thumb up icon in on the left hand side somewhere on your screen. That would be amazing. And do tell your friends about our YouTube channel. We're so, so, so close to 3000 subscribers. So it would be great to uh, tip that over the edge, hopefully before the end of this week. That would be amazing. That, that would be great. Right, so little legs here. Now I'm gonna try and follow the instructions as much as I can. Remember, you can get your chicken, standing chicken pack, I've chucked the um, packaging on the floor now, that comes with all this wool and the wire to make the legs um, and um, and we and the full color instructions, step-by-step -step color instructions. We kept that on the shop and you can still buy it now. So do um, check that out if you want to re-watch any of these tutorials. They stay on YouTube, of course, and also on our Facebook page. So you can go back anytime and then you can press, you can press mute if you want to. Um, probably lots of people want to press mute when I um, start all this rubbish, talking all the rubbish. And um, 
but you can of course also just press stop so that um, you can catch up if, if I'm going a bit too fast. Right, here we go. Um, overhead camera, let's have a look at these um, fancy legs. They're, they've turned out quite well actually. I've, I've covered them a little bit more with the florist tape to build up um, their fatness. And the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to use the wool that you get in your in your pack and um, sometimes if it's bitty like this don't be dis dis don't be disheartened by it you can actually even tease out a bitty bit to um, to sort of make a longer strand and you basically we want to dress the legs up now now the the chicken won't have um, a lot of the long leg sticking up because we're going to give her bloomers so she will have eventually um, that lovely sort of uh, muted orange will be her her um, well, her, her pants basically. But what you need to do is just wind, uh, cover some of the leg up and of course um, use your felting needle. If it's not staying on, just give it a few stabs. This is just so that we create the base for these um, chicken thighs there. Nice, nice chicken thighs. I much prefer the woolen ones than any others. And then you do this on the other side as well. So might as well do one side and then the other side straight away. So build up some nice even chicken thighs, try and keep them the same. Um, now in the instructions, I can tell you already that I have um, already missed the skipped, um, missed the skip, <sighs> skipped a step. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, because um, in the instructions, I'm actually telling you to um, split the wool, which is I'm, what I'm going to do now so that I, um, I'm not going to get carried away giving this chicken an extra um, wide bottom or um, big head or something like that. So I'm going to make this, I'm going to follow these instructions. Right, um, right. So basically from your first half of the, no, first of all, use one part for the legs, I oh know, before that even, before you start, split your basic core wool, the large amount of white wool into two parts. So this is this is this here really. We've only used um, um, tiny amounts on the feet. So this is the, um, oh no, we had the London Enrich for that. Sorry, I'm talking rubbish. So this is the main amount, split that in half, roughly in half, it's really not rocket science. And um, so you're going to um, use one part for the legs and the lower body of the chicken and the other for the top. So basically I'm going to use the smaller, slightly smaller one because I've used a, a little bit on the legs. So if you're doing it that way around, you you won't, it, it's fine. Don't worry that you don't have to take the wool of the legs off again to split the wool in half. It'll be fine. And um, so from your first half, which is what I've already done, I've gone, I've skipped a step ahead, um, is um, the leg, the, the thighs. And then we take a hand, a good handful of wool from the same batch and wind it, wind it into an egg shape. And this is where I always uh, find it funny when you, if ever you wondered um, what's come first, the egg or the chicken, um, it's the egg, of course, because you've got to build up the egg first to make the chicken fit around it. Now I've got lots of bitty wool here. There is nothing wrong with having bitty wool, okay? It's not pretty and it's um, a little bit more involved to get it um, into a nice flat sheet, but you can do it. So what you need to do is get the bits and tease them out into flatter sheets. And then find the largest flat sheet that you can make out of this. And that's the one that we're going to put at the base. Let's use this one here, there. And then everything else sits on top. So putting the shorter pieces on the top and you're building up a nice padded, um, thickish base here. That's my good handful that I'm building up here. And um, because you know that um, on the outside you've got that big sheet underneath it, you're just rolling this into an egg shape now. So I'm making sure that it's nice and contained. Roll this into quite a soft egg shape. A lot of our felts, um, our needle felted items are quite softly felted um, to start with anyway. And then you just stab the needle into the wispy ends of, um, of that rolled up shape so that it holds it together now. It's not, um, it's not nice to look at, but it has now um, kept its shape just by stabbing the needle into these um, wispy ends. And if you're wondering what on earth is she using today, I haven't seen her use this before. I, um, I, I just took that single needle holder from the prim needle felting tool 
which um, I haven't, I, I haven't, um, I've got a second one that I haven't loaded, but this is basically the prim needle felting tool that has got at the moment seven working needles there. And you can put this cup on the back. I've talked about this lots of time, but if you're new, you might not have seen this. So this is always great to have a multi-tool, especially if you're making a large area and um, and you need to felt this down. And um, the great thing about this is that it's um, you have to push that little sort of um, button at the back to, for it to pop out. It has got a single needle felting tool in there. So you can also just use a single tool, which um, helps um, hold the needle um, a little bit more stable in your hand because they're not very hand friendly needles and um, of course when you're not using this because it is quite a vicious tool make sure you um, close it up properly and then um, put it to one side so that it's not um, it's it's not gonna I don't know go walkie somewhere right so this um, bit that I've um, rolled up I'm going to keep it quite soft I'm not even going to felt it down very much at all um, so in fact, I have felted it down hardly. Um, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to put these legs into the side of um, of this shape. Now they're they're going sort of very on the very outside, and um, you might want to decide if you've got one if you've got a right or a left foot. <laughs> I don't know how you would decide that. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm deciding I've got uh, that's the the right foot. Um, I mean you can bend your uh, legs and feet into into the position that you want to really. So I'm just poking into these wispy ends. I'm poking this um, wire through um, which is this is not felted so it's quite easy to get it through. You just need to keep it nice and soft so that it's coming through at the other end especially if you've got a covered wire. So now I've got um, I can, you can see where I'm going with this, right? This is so obvious, going to be a chicken. It's such a great design. Um, and um, and so then what you need to do is to keep these legs in place. You have to bend the wire down on itself just so that we are trapping these legs now. So do this on the other side as well. Um, just the fact that you've bent it down, that will trap it. Um, and, and now you've got your sort of chicken, chicken lower chicken contraption. So um, in terms of size of the egg shape, um, there isn't actually a measurement on the instructions, but I would say looking at this, it's about 12 by 12 by 6 centimeters or, or something like that. So this will be this if, if you want a chicken that's slightly lower to the ground, then you just have to bend the um, the wire down a little bit more. If the wire is too long, you there's nothing stopping you from um, cutting it shorter, obviously. So if it's in the way, because on, on one of my legs, I think it's slightly shorter than the other, because remember, we made the legs, so we might have um, made one of the toes a little bit longer or shorter or whatever. But in any case, just bend the wire out of the way so that it's not sticking out, so you don't feel any wire. And then the next thing you're going to do is, um, we're going to wrap wool so that we're trapping um, the side of the legs in there as well. So we're using um, the batch that we've put to one side. And again, we need to, if you've got bitty pieces of wool like I have, you're going to have to maybe do this in stages. So what I'm doing now is I am felting down a little bit of the wool where I've started it. And then I'm wrapping it around the chicken. So I'm, I'm, I'm securing the legs a little bit more into the body. And once we felt it all down and cover it with um, the, the this lovely orange wool, um, it will all stay properly in place. So don't worry if the legs are um, very gangly and very unruly at the moment. Just make sure that um, you've got your your chicken. It's already standing. Love it. Look, it's like. So what you're doing next is um, you are going to build up a little bit more around the middle. This is where you can decide to give your chicken wide hips or, um, I don't know, a sticky out bottom or whatever. But remember, you, you have to work with the wool. Well, you don't have to. You can use your own wool. Um, work with the wool that you've got available and just felt it down into place. Remember that there is um, potentially a wire at the top of the legs, so don't go too much into it. I'm really loving this. I, I, I don't know. There was something about this project that I really love, but I do love chickens. I think that definitely helps. So, and um, 
and then you are going to just build up a little bit more and you're actually connecting the the leg wool into that um, body that you've built so that's the first or the second um, way of making um, the legs a little bit more stable so you definitely have to watch about um, watch out for the wire there but that will now help the legs to um, stay in the right place so make sure you've got your feet pointing in the right way and I'm doing that on here as well there we go and in a minute I'd, I'll let you catch up um, if you're felting along and I'll have a look at um, what people are talking about on the chat um, so you can you build up more chicken um, more chicken more of the chicken more wool on the chicken um, remember you have got the the all this wool that you put to one side you've got that half that is completely out of the equation but all the other wool that um, from this from the first half that you're using you can use to make these legs um, and the lower body body more shapely build them up um, shape it a little bit to your liking the red wool that we add later on is mostly to cover the surface so we're not um, going to add any more bulk um, to it so you can do all this bulking up do it now and the felting together and I definitely would recommend be careful of that wire inside the legs there that's it <clears throat> if if you can't get the wire through it it's probably because you're poking too hard because that's um so you might just have to sort of um not pull the wool too tight and just let the wire find its way if it still doesn't go then use something like an awl or a knitting needle um you could even use a, a coarse ne a felting needle um and and sort of make um make the path first and then follow it with the, with a the wire if you've got a cotton covered wire then it is a little bit harder to poke uh, it through the wool but it should not be that it should not be impossible especially because we haven't felt it the wool um, in the parts where you are poking the wire through so you should be able to do that um, just it's what I think what is easy what can easily happen is that you're really trying too hard to poke it through so maybe just ease off a little bit with with um, trying too hard and just let it sort of find its way on its own through the loose fibers rather than tightening the fibers and then you're fighting it rather than letting it sort of find its own way so have a go at that um, and of course it's great when people ask questions because they might be the questions that come up later on the tutorial when it's not live anymore and um, and then it's great when we have these questions already answered so don't be afraid to ask questions. It's always good to have them. Okay. Um, right. Let's um, let's go onto the big camera for a minute and have a little little look at what is happening here on the screen in front of me. So we have got um, we've got some suggestions for the for the hatching projects, lots of suggestions. Oh, you've got lots of plans. That's always good. I love to hear new plans and projects. So let's start hopefully at the beginning, <laughs> wherever that is. Um, oh, first of all, a special mention for Angela. Afternoon, first time able to join live. Looking forward to it. Welcome, Angela. Always love it when there's new names pop up. Um, so making another chick because the first one is lonely. Oh, that's what Denise is saying. Uh, my next project waiting to do is a 2D leopard cup picture. Wow, Sandra, that sounds um, quite a project. Um, my next project is decorated eggs. Oh, yes, that brings me to um, just letting you know that we have got an egg tutorial, a needle felted egg tutorial on our YouTube channel already. And um, and these just happen to be decorated like a, um, a spring landscape. And I've seen some amazing ones after the live stream that you've made with little bunnies on there as well and all kinds of um, extra decorations. But the main thing is that it shows you how to make an egg shape and then you can go and um, uh, be let loose on decorating to your liking, of course. Um, my next needle felting project is some Easter crosses for friends at church. Wow, I've, ne I've never needle felted a cross. That would be definitely a new one for me. Eva says, my brother-in-law and girlfriend are having a baby next month. Oh, 
Uh, so I have to knit some baby clothes. So that will be fun for next for the next project. You know, I absolutely love knitting. I keep thinking I must just get something out and just do anything um, in the evenings. Um, I, I, I always forget, but I do love knitting. Natasha says, my current project is a knitted cardigan for my nephew. Oh, there's another baby on the way who is due in three weeks. My ne next project will be a surprise. I can't tell you, but it will be green and made out of makers. Aha, <laughs> uh -huh. well, I want to say it's a dragon, but you've made that already, haven't you, um, Natasha? So it's maybe maybe a second dragon in green. Um, Angela says, uh, making some lovely felted Easter eggs. Great. Donna says, next craft project. Mm, too many to think about. I really need to do my catch from the subs box in December and the valley sheep from February. That's me decided as it's spring, the sheep and lamb. Excellent. I think that's a really good idea. Catherine says, afternoon all. Uh, my next project is another owl as a buddy for my subs box make and that's Sue's. Now, with regards to the owls, I don't, I don't want to speak out of turn and Emma will put me right, but I think we're very, very near to... Um, to list the um, the owl packs that um, that were the makers box in January because it was such a hit, but we've had problems with the sourcing of the wire for the legs. So we're working really, really hard on it. Bear with us, we're nearly there. Um, talking about next projects, if you do need ideas, then I can help out as well. So if you're struggling to put anything in the comments, you could put one of these things in the comments that I'm mentioning now. At the end of this month, so after, um, next week we're doing part three of the standing chicken the week after that on Tuesday we're going to do the daisy chain and the um, needle felted daisies onto the felt here and um, and this is all in preparation to the daisy fairy which I I, I haven't really shown you yet um, too close up but there's the daisy um, chain as you can see her the daisy is sitting in there and then there are also some felt daisies that I will be showing you how to make on I think it's the 30th of um of March which is the last Tuesday of the it's the last month the last day of the month and the last Tuesday of the month. Now, the daisy fairy. I absolutely love this little daisy fairy. I always love every time I make a fairy, I love that one better than the next one. But I will just show you um her on the overhead camera because um she is I f I think she's rather special. She's special because I've actually on purpose gave her a really big head with this is um, another one of those dolls hair worlds that um, you can use for making the sewn dolls, but actually it works really well for putting them onto fairies as well. And um, she's got this beautiful um, white um, dress where all the petals are there. And then the extra surprise is if you turn her upside down, she's got a flower inside. So this is this happened just accidentally, but when I turned her around, I thought, oh, it's like a flower with um, flower stamen that are her legs. Uh, so, and of course she's holding a couple of daisies and she's got these beautiful daisy um, wings. And so we've, we've gone a little bit daisy mad basically for April, which is why we're doing the daisy chain for which you can buy your pack still. They're all, they're, they are actually selling like hotcakes at the moment. So there are gonna be lots of people watching, which is so exciting. I like it when I've got a big crowd. And we make the felt daisies as well, all in preparation maybe for the daisy fairy. And um, I've already seen lots of daisies out there. So so that would be that would be um, amazing to see lots of daisy fairies surrounded by all like pretty beautiful fairies. And maybe you can dress yourself with a daisy chain as well. So that's one idea if you can't think of a project. And, um, and what's up in the pipeline, and we'll just bring this closer as well, is that we've now got um, a project that we are taking to the Creative Craft Show online again. This is where um, you get the benefit of a 90 minute 90 minute live tutorial making one of these small tortoiseshell butterflies and of course they're not small that's the name of the butterfly they're called small tortoiseshell butterflies and this is a specific technique using water soluble paper which makes a really lovely thin um sort of finish on 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 there and they're they're meant to look really realistic and you get in your pack you get this box frame that there, there is a glass in front of it but I actually much prefer them 
so that it's almost like you can have it on the wall, have one inside the frame and the other one flying out, like you're setting the butterflies free, even though um, they might have been in the, in the box frame before. So you get all of this um, and you have to go to the website for the Creative Craft Show. Now I will say this is gonna be made live today and it isn't yet. So by Thursday, when whoever's watching this will have it. But the quickest way to get to the shop for the Creative Craft Show is to put in um, shop dot and then creativecraftshow.co.uk. That's the quickest way to get to um, the products that they're offering um, to support the whole event on Saturday, the 17th of um, April. And I have actually got... You can, um, let's have a look. You can have a look on here. Oh yes, here we go. You can see it all in writing there as well. So it's um, only £7.99 for the whole day. It stays on on the, um, an exclusive Facebook group where you can go back because there will be events um, um, coinciding. So you won't be able to watch everything live um, if, you're just, if there's just one of you, unless you can multitask with several screens. And um, you can... Um, you can see that uh, the the butterfly uh, workshop pack will be available to purchase and it is the quickest way is to do shop.creativecraftshow.co.uk but it's not there yet so don't run away doing this now and just to remind you here's the daisy chain um so that allows you to make this beautiful daisy chain it comes in a pack both of those do not have um any uh, tools with it so you either have to use your own but we also have got some special tools um on offer for you um on the on the creative craft show shop so that that there is yeah just when it's there just go and have a look but i was promised it will be there today so that would be nice if you if you could um get that quickly there are always limited numbers for that so don't hang about and uh, and then we will be there on the 17th live with you Right, I was reading next project comments here. Um, mini chickens from the makers PDF and your woodland wool pack. Oh, lovely. Oh, yes, nice. Yeah, the little chickens, they're, um, they're definitely easier than the large chicken. I'm also tempted to make a start on the beautiful dragon from this month's sub box. Absolutely, Faith, go for it. Um, now, Joey says, I think it's you, jo Joey, isn't it? Um, my next project is to attempt a fluffy chick. Brilliant. Laura says, my next project is organizing my fluff and needle felting tools and accessories so they stay together when I move. Oh, you're moving. That's always um, exciting and stressful all at the same time. Diana says, my next pro project should be to finish some of my half done things, but I've got so many ideas for new stuff. Don't worry about half finished stuff. They will all come together in the end. Um, I've been doing X shaped. I've been doing eggs shaped to bunnies. Okay, Dawn, I don't know what you mean, but um, yeah, it probably makes perfect sense to everybody else. Um, Pamela says, good morning from Oregon. Hello, Pamela, all the way um, from the US, currently working on dragon bunnies, various fancy eggs and various bunnies. My owl is languishing half done. Don't worry about half done stuff. Go where the energy takes you. It's all in our heads that we can't start something else unless we finished uh, something um, that we've started already. It's completely in your heads, okay? This is this is childhood stuff that you've been told. You can't do something else until you've done that. Who says? Who? There's no law in the whole wide world. And sometimes it's so much better to come back to half-finished stuff. And, um, and if you don't worry about it, you will be amazed how quickly it's suddenly done when you never when you thought this is going to take forever and ever because it's like a molehill grows into a mountain and then you come back and when the energy is right and it just gets done in no time and it might even turn out into something else entirely i just love that when that happens so don't don't feel the pressure just start something new don't worry about it michael says my next project's easter eggs valley sheep and the birthday card oh nice um Okay, so what else have we got? Okay, I'm going to read some more of these comments, but I want to get on with um, the chicken here. So I'm going back to the overhead camera. So there comes the chicken again. There she is standing nicely with slightly pigeon-toed legs, but I think I can still bend them. And um, so what we're doing next is we need to build the upper body. So I'm going to put her to one side. I've still got a bit of wool left here from the lower body, but that's fine because we can still fatten her out a bit. 
So what happens next is that um, you use the other half that you put aside from all of the big white batch that you've got. And again, um, what you do is you take a handful of the other stuff. So it's very similar to what we did with a lower body, just a handful, like that sort of a handful, right? And what you have to do is you, again, if you've got bitty pieces, this one isn't so bad, actually. I might be able to use that as a whole. If you've got bits, then do what um, I showed you earlier. If you don't, then um, broaden this out into sort of a shape like that. It's quite big. And then you fold this in half and you keep the folded edge at the top, which I've got here. And um, and then you roll it, roll the flat shape up in at a right angle from left to right or right to left, whichever you prefer. So basically what that means is you've got the folded edge at the top and you're rolling it in from either side, left or right. There you go. And then you end up with um, a sausage with fluffy bits at the end. And then you're gonna start felting the wispy ends down so the rolled up um so that you can the wispy ends being these wispy ends that you've rolled up rather than the ends of the wispy end we're keeping the, those unfelted just stab the um, roll shut basically that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to close this shape up as we did earlier with um, the egg shape as well and i've got lots of bits here because it was it was a little bit bitty, this piece of wool. So basically what you're doing now is you've got, this is the head of the chicken, and this is sort of what sits on top of the body. So we're keeping this nice and fluffy, but we're felting this part down. The chicken is not felted down solidly. It is a very soft finish. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to go and use my Clover 3 needle felting tool. You can also use your um blue version of this tool which is which is unbranded and slightly cheaper on our website but the three needle clover the three needle clover felting needle tool the three needle clover tool that way has got an an added advantage so when i'm stabbing now the wool gets only felted from here down to where the tip of the needle is but you can actually take a section off this tool and that will allow you to go a little bit deeper and give it more of a, I don't know, a faster, a faster um, progress in in getting this shape felted down. So that is the only one of the only added advantages. It's it's also slightly better quality. Um, I will be honest. So, however big the piece that I'm making is. Is, is a bit random so it doesn't we don't actually specify this in the instructions because this chicken can be as long as you've taken a handful it could it could be um short and squat or long and um and and thin and that is because all the chickens will look completely different but if you want to know how big this piece is it is about um well it's about 16 centimeters by eight centimeters this this project will is teaching you also just to maybe be really freestyle with your with your chicken. And what you do now is you're going to um you're going to spread these wispy ends out that you've left wispy. So you've got a bit of a <laughs> strange piece there. <laughs> At this point, I just want to disappear into the ground. It's, this is always what happens when you make something like this. It just doesn't ever look. I'm just going to make a small change to it oh my god i really needed that laugh today thank you chicken okay i'm i'm just I'm just making a small alteration i just need to step this down a little bit more all is good all is good don't worry i'm only i'm only here about i'm I'm only sitting here about the color of the um, pink um, felting mat underneath it because I'm having a, a really, really terrible, terrible intuition that I've actually made this worse now. <laughs> Better. But in any case, oh uh, dear, okay, this is, um, so I'm pulling this apart so that I've got a nice flat base and and then you get you, the rest of your chicken here and then you're going to put this on top of it. So it's it is literally like a rocket stop laughing Steffi and then these bits you're pulling over the base shape that you have made okay and um, somebody needs to just change my um, state of mind right now because I cannot stop laughing um, 
Okay, I'm going to think of something really sad now. Oh, have I told you the story about the crow? <sighs> Bird. Okay, this is a sad story, distracting me from what I'm doing here. Whilst I'm talking to you, don't look. I'm going to... <laughs> Sorry, it's not working, this sad story. <laughs> I'm just going to felt that um, long shape onto the chicken's um, body. Okay, so this is where I'm heading with this. So I'm just pulling these wispy fibers over her hips and thighs and I'm felting this on. So we um we we rescued a crow the other day um in a field. I'm sure I haven't told you this. No, 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 I haven't told you this. This only happened. Have I told you this? Anyway, if I'm telling you the story again, then I do apologize. And um I I um well when my daughter found this crow and then she t told me about it, there was the, what what I just like said, I wish you hadn't told me. Now I've got to do something about it. I can't bear the thought of this poor crow that um, couldn't fly because it had a very damaged wing um, being in the field. So I, um, um, we went in the field and we chased it and it was very fast, even though, please somebody tell me if I've told you the story already because I feel I'm making a fool of myself. Um, it was very fast at running, even though it couldn't fly. So it took us quite a while to um, chase it and corner it and then it found some hole in the wall or in the fence to slip through and then we had to climb over the, over it to get to the other side to catch up with it again. Anyway, quite a long story short, we tr put it in a box and then um, I found out where I could possibly take it now because we obviously couldn't um, couldn't do anything with it. So um, I... Um, we 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 put it in the box, put it in a in the um, in the shed just to keep it calm and quiet. And I couldn't leave everything that was doing anyway. And so in the evening, um, I did find out that there was a wildlife trust um, only about fifty minutes drive away from us. Yes, this is the crow we're talking about. And um, so after work, I um, packed the crow in the car together with my daughter, and we drove to the wild to this wildlife trust. 24 hours open, seven days a week, so perfect. Handed over the box and um, and um, we said, okay, we think it's a crow and it's not very well. And they said, yes, it is a crow and it's very much alive, but its wing is not even attached anymore. And they said, we can't do anything about it, really. We need to put it to sleep. And they were very nice about it. And um, I felt, I think I felt a bit stupid actually, because I thought, Oh, it's a crow but then you know it's a, it's an animal and if I could have helped it then it would have been really nice even though I've driven twice 50 miles and as we walked up as we got out of the car park there was a, a tree full of crows and they were all it was almost like they were um there was a mockery going on but I do feel we've done the right thing and the people in the wildlife center also said that was very kind because otherwise it would have just you know been chased by a wild animal and would have had um, a much less nice ending. So I feel um, we've done the right thing. Anyway, this was to distract me from um, this very, very strange shape of the chicken. Hopefully it has worked. There is the chicken and now you can see where we're going with this. So um, this is slightly a different shape, but um, there is a lot of air still here in the top. So I'm going to felt that down a little bit more um, while, whilst you're whilst I've got you on the large camera. So the idea is that it doesn't matter. I, I I always think of Chicken Run when I make this chicken because it's just so funny to see. If you haven't watched this film, it is the funniest film on the planet. And all the chickens are different shapes. Some of them are um, really round. Some of them are a bit more gangly. Some of them are, you know, have bumps and lumps in some places and lumps and bumps in other, other places. So basically, they're, it's a bit like people. We're all different. So don't um, try or you can try to make a carbon copy but go with it if your chicken just wants to be a slightly different shape wants to be taller or shorter or whatever you cannot go wrong with a stylized chi chicken because that's the whole point of making a stylized animal is that you're actually um, putting your own interpretation onto it so don't don't be too um, worried about it now what I'm noticing is that my chicken has got a very flat bottom but quite a um, a nice little tummy there. So I've got lots of white left and I'm going to um, go off the peak here a little bit and just give it um, give it a bit of just add patches where you want to build the body up basically that's what I'm saying. So that um, works quite well 
And the next thing we're going to do is, because if you ever study the chicken, they seem to have no heads. Yes, they have eyes and they have a comb and they've got a wattle, but they don't seem to have like, you know, this is my neck and then there's the head. They just seem to have long, one long thing that sort of gets tapered at the top. That seems to be the neck and the head will come together. So we're not actually having to make a head because this is already the head of the chicken there. Right, so I'm felting the wool just into the places where I want to build up a little bit of bulk. I've still got quite a bit of white wool left here. So this is the time now to, to shape the chicken if you want it to be a little bit more bulky all around. A good way of building up bulk is by using patches of wool like this and, um, and lay them on top of each other so that you've got instantly, you've got a nice padded piece of wool that you can attach where you want it to go and then just felt it down you're probably best off using your single needle just to felt it down um, and remember where I'm felting now is also wire um, very nearby so use the, the use the white wool to build up either maybe more hips or a bigger bottom or make the chicken round all together wherever you feel it needs to be built up and it is really really softly felted it is it is not a heavy bird um so meaning it is not very solidly felted with lots of wool the reason being is that we don't want the legs to collapse under under it um so i've i've kept the weight of this chicken quite light because the legs will definitely hold its weight and it can stay it can stand on the two legs very very stable so that's the nice thing about this so still adding a little bit more on in fact i'm going to add a little bit more on its um, um between its legs as well and felt it down when you do this at home bear in mind i've needle felted for 17 years so when i'm felting i'm felting fast when you do this at home you might just take a little bit longer so don't worry if at any point you've got to say okay i'm just going to finish this now and um whatever i'm doing and i'm have to re-watch the other bits sorry just dropped my needle there we go um so so don't feel like you've got to keep up with me i know that i'm a fast felter um with uh, especially with um the long experience that i have had right so this looks a lot better now can you see it's really fun make giving this chicken um sort of now it's got like a nice little bottom there can felt this down a little bit more and add more if you want if you want to add more on onto the hips but i'm going to give it it's almost like i'm going to put a bit of a nappy on it now by putting more underneath the legs spreading that out and felting that down as well so I've still got white wool left after that, um, but I'm I'm um, I've, I've um, padded it out quite a, li a little bit now. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it a tail. Now, we'll, before I start talking about the tail, I'm sort of assuming we're making a hen, so like a female chicken, but it doesn't stop you from making a cockerel. And if you want to make a cockerel, um, you maybe need some more um, interesting colors to. Um, make the tail and I was I've been thinking about this I absolutely love our parrot um, South American tops the parrot which is a um, is great for for uh, making a multicolored tail and I've probably got some knocking around here so I will grab them and maybe show that to you how you could possibly do that so I just have to have a look around um, if I don't have the parrot here, then I might have to use something else. But um, if you're a subscriber, the all of the wool tops are in the sub club this this month as well, so you can definitely get um, them twenty percent reduced. So a good time to stock up on interesting tops. And um, talking about the sub club, of course, March's project is the dragon, still looking beautiful with his. Um, with this elegant body, body that you can actually pose entirely because it's got a wire running through um, from the tip of the nose all the way to the tip of the tail. He's got these beautiful Angelina fiber wings that you make yourself from the Angelina fiber that comes in the box. Remember, none of our subscription boxes tie you into a contract. You can unsubscribe anytime um, or you can skip boxes as well. Um, we've got three subscription boxes, namely the uh, Makers box, which this month is the Dragon, next month is the Puffin. Some of you may have already seen some photos floating. Um, then we have got a Fairy box. This month is the Rainbow Fairy. 
and um, there you've seen the Daisy Fairy, which is starting on the 1st of April. It changes over, all the boxes change over always on the 1st of each month. So you have time until the very end of a month to get that respective box. And then if you want the next box, wait until the 1st of the month. And then the third box we have got is a surprise box. The theme in um, March was um, Easter and in April, it will be cherry blossoms and so that's very exciting we're very excited because they they look absolutely delicious when we pack them and of course we can never show you the contents we might do a mid-month um, um surprise box teaser that might be something just for those who are undecided most of you um hopefully will have had the boxes but we can always say that um if you don't want to see what's inside so we might do a post we did that last month so i'm building i'm um, now i'm now I've, I've got the idea of making this chicken um nice and sturdy around her her legs and um and waist so i'm adding a little bit more as you're stabbing it so this is probably typically what you would be doing at home though you don't have to do that you can have a slightly scrawnier chicken if you want um, the chick, my the legs of my chicken are quite they're they're a little bit sort of like on the wide side, whereas this one has got her legs closer together. But again, like I say, it doesn't really matter because it's not affecting her um, stability. She's standing quite solid, so you know you can obviously to a degree you can bend her forward and backwards because the center of gravity is is pretty much bang on on top of the legs, which is great because she's standing up tall. Right, so the next thing um, that I will show you now is how to make the tail. For this, I'm going to go to the overhead camera again. But before I do this, I just have a little chat um, check in the chat. That's what I'm trying to say. I have a chat, a check in the chat. Um, oh, we've got new. Have we got new people? Ooh. Has everybody given us the thumbs up? Because um, we've got quite a lot of people here now. 46 people watching right now from what I can see. But uh, my my um, data is not always that uh, reliable. Um, so we have got... I'm, I'm sorry if I can't read out, of, um, out all of you. I'm sorry I can't read all of your suggestions out or ideas. Sorry, I tried to put too many words into a sentence and then um, sometimes it gets jumbled up that I forget some or for miss some and sometimes they even go in the wrong order. So I do apologize. Carol says, my next project is an Easter diorama made mostly from the Easter surprise box. Brilliant. Just talked about the surprise boxes. There you go. My next project um, are the mini chickens. Oh, no, I've done all of that. Oh, damn. Okay. Um, sorry, I didn't say that. Uh, Catherine says, my next project, other than the... Um, sub boxes is to do the valley lamb that I didn't do at the weekend my dad thought I had brought the Sean as he I had bought the Sean as he was that good so if you don't know what Catherine is talking about we've just had an amazing weekend hug what we call a weekend hug which is a zoom um a a Zoom retreat, basically, which run um, over two days, Saturday and Sunday, and um, it's the valley. It's a valley lamb, life size valley lamb, um, that people were making. But some some people took a slight twist on it and turned it into um, into a very famous sheep um, that um, wasn't the plan at all. But that's what some people did, and that was worked out really well. Um, so Catherine is actually now doing the valley lamb. Donna said, what sort of, oh, no, 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 I've, oh, no, I've been there, sorry, Donna. Um, Vampire says, we'll be doing some simple needle felting when my neck stops hurting. Maybe another Tom to but no plans for more adventure time characters at the moment. Oh, no, that's annoying. I hope it wasn't a needle felted, um, inflicted, like, I don't know, repetitive strain injury. That can be really annoying. Um, Stephanie says, my wire won't go through what I have done wrong. Okay, I think we've covered that, sorry. Um, you haven't done anything wrong, Steph um, Stephanie, and hopefully you got your wire poked through there now. <sighs> okay, um, let's have a look. Uh, oh, Karen says, um, hi, Karen here, loving your new projects. Great, I think you're probably referring to the daisy chain and the butterfly. Oh, one butterfly has flown away on the floor. There it is. Sorry, I didn't, didn't um, notice that falling off. But you will absolutely love these. I promise you, they're they're like magic. You 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 um, it's it's quite a strange thing to be stabbing a delicate butterfly, but you have to stab it hard to make it delicate. Seems really a paradox thing, but we're talking needle felting here. Everything's weird when it comes to needle felting. Maria is here. 
Oh no, it's actually Emma. Emma here. Internet trouble here. I will post links when I can get back online on my laptop. Oh, sorry, Emma. Um, SR says, I've already got my ticket. This is to the Creative Craft Show, of course. Donna says, got my ticket already. Um, ah, and Donna has got her daisy chain. Excellent. Um, oh, I think Emma is back. Um, but but the internet's still a bit dodgy at her end. Karen says, my valet sheep just arrived last week, seeing, oh yeah, because Karen, you're in Canada, I think, seeing as my sub box come on the day of my birthday every month. Oh, hang on a second. Come on, come on the day of my birthday every month, which is at the end of each month. I'm always way behind. You don't have a birthday every month, do you? This is like... Okay, I'm probably reading this wrong. Just just um, moving on swiftly. Um, okay, so the crow story was no excellent. I'm not repeating myself too much. I probably told it about 50 times to other people. Right, going back to the chicken now. And I think once I've got that um, tail attached here, I'm going to call it um, a, a day on the, on the competition. Let Emma pick the winner for today's sweetie jar stuffed with wool price um what else have i got to tell you so um last chance i'm just going to show you this today's price just last chance because you've got about two or three minutes to get this um get this in today you can win if you joined late you can win um yourself a um sweetie jar stuffed with um nice spring-like wool and it um it will wheedle its way to you once Emma has picked a random person if you're telling us what is your next project that you're hatching out or that is waiting to be hatched. Right, so I said earlier that um, you could turn your chicken into a cockerel um, but first of all you do need to take a good pinch of this, there we go, of that, of that wool. So it's um so this is now depends how big a tail you want there to be. If you want to make a small stubby tail like this, then just take sort of like a handful of that. If you want to make a bigger tail, then maybe take a little bit. I'm making this up now um, with regards to the cockerel, so there might be better ways of doing this. But if you're making um, a chicken tail like this one here, then you follow the instructions and you've got your patch of wool here and you fold this in half like you did with um, the head. But this time, instead of rolling it in, you're actually just folding it so that you end up with a triangle like that. Okay, I'll show you this overhead. Um, here we go. So you've got your flat piece of wool there. You fold it in half like that. And then instead of rolling it in, which is what you did on the head, you're actually just folding it one and two into a triangle. I'll show you that that way round again. So fold it in half and then you fold it in one and two into a triangle and then you felt that down. If you're making a cockerel, what you could do is, and um, I'm just going to grab some of that of that wool top that I was talking about. So we have got um, a wool top that is called um, Parrot and it's a South American um, merino. It looks like that and I think it would make a really nice cockerel tail. If you're doing that, then you could take some of that and whilst you've got your piece of wool folded in half, you could probably put that in there. Maybe even stretch it out a bit, fold it in half and have both ends sticking out because otherwise one, one end is wasted. And then you trap that in there, could be nice and long there. And you've got, um, you've almost sort of got a bit of a, an extra attention here. And then your um, extension, not attention, extension. Start this shut. So if you're doing this without an extra bit sticking out, then um, then obviously you don't have that st bit sticking out, but you're still felting that into um, into a tail shape. Remember, it's a stylized chicken. So if you come up with better ideas, go for it. This is this is just an, an impromptu um, creation. Could pull this out a little bit more, make it longer even and felt it down and then as we did before the way to attach it is by um by the way if you're doing this as a as a, um, a hen's tail i have i've made that quite pointy here so i don't know if you can see that so it's quite a pointy tail a lot smaller but in any case what you're doing is you um 
broadening out the end of that tail again um, and you're attaching it to your chicken. So in this case, if it was a cockerel, he's got an extra bit of colorful fluff sticking out there and just felt it on the chicken and, and felt it all the way across the body because we're going to color in all of this in that lovely um, muted orange. It's like a burnt orange. So don't don't worry if um, if you're spreading this wool out everywhere. That's exactly what, what we want to happen. And stab it right in. Um, I mean, it would be amazing if it was even longer so that it, it, it sort of almost comes, it goes, you know, goes like that. Um, <laughs> it does look a bit funny, I'll be honest. Maybe I should have just stuck to hens. Um, we've only got hens here at home. We don't have cockerels, so I, I don't have first experience on what cockerels look like. But I, th I feel it needs to be more like coming, coming up rather than um, hanging down. So make it point it upwards so that it can um, it can sort of point down. <laughs> oh, I really hope you're having as much fun making this chicken and having a giggle because there's nothing better than having a good old laugh. It's it's the best medicine. I haven't laughed today until I um, attempted a very dubious looking chicken. So it's um, it's been it's it's just so nice to be able to laugh. I have had my vaccination today, however. So that, yeah, I can't feel a thing. It's just, yeah, it's fine. So I've been fine. No, no weird things growing out of me yet or anything else. So that's good. I don't suppose I could get any weirder than I am already. Right. Oh yeah, that's a bit better, isn't it? Having the tail so that it's going up um, rather than, and then you can sort of bend it down later. It looks very weird at the moment, but I'm sure it will be absolutely fine once, um, once we, um, make cover the rest of the chicken in and this is exactly what needs to happen is that you are now going to cover the rest of the chicken basically in um in the uh, main color wool which is the muted orange it's like a lovely sort of burnt orange color um but you also can already make the wings and i'll show you how to make the wings because they can be touched next and then we can just whilst we're coloring the chicken and we can um go out of the way a little bit there we can um, use the wing cover to color the chicken in already, but also the main cover we can use to cover the join of the wing. So to make the wings is exactly how you did the tail, with the exception that you can um, make two types of wings. And now that I've attached the, um, the tail, I can also tell you that the winner today is Rebecca M. Rebecca M, if you're still watching, do send us an email to info at themakers.co.uk and whoever is winning this on Thursday on the replay on Facebook, um, please do the same thing. So send us a message to info squiggly bit at the makers two s's um, dot co dot ek and just um, tell us that you are the winner of um, the sweetie jar on, after today's live stream. And then it, um, we will get in touch and you, um, we will ask you for your address so you can send it already and we will just post it out to you. So Rebecca M, well done. You're the winner today on the YouTube live stream and there will be another winner on Thursday. So congratulations already into the future, whoever that is. Right, let's go back to the wing. So chickens have actually got um, quite small wings. Um, they can fly. Um, sometimes they, we don't want them to fly because then they fly into the next door garden or something like that. So here I'm, I'm, I've got a patch of wool and I'm folding that in half again, like I did with the tail, keep the folded edge at the top and then you're just turning it in um, a couple of times. And again, this is how you make new shapes. They can be 3D as well if, you're, if you remember how we did the head. It's a great way to make a shape to attach to an existing um, shape. So you can felt this down now what you can do is felt this from both sides and what you can do is you can sort of draw the individual feathers for the wings on there. Remember it's a stylized chicken. I'm not claiming that this is how chickens actually look like but other than in your imagination but they can be real fun and we will have fun on part three when we're actually making the eyes and that, that's when your chicken will get even more character. So to draw on the individual almost fingers which are of course feathers um, you just go in a really solid line um, from the front of or from the back, whichever way 
you can put three or four in there um, and felt it down and then do this on the other side as well so you've got it so you're making a nice um, distinct feature here on the wings and then you have to keep repeating it and then you can sort of stab into the front of there at a at a um, shallow angle right into the front of it so that you um, make it look as if they're sort of separate so that is one way and this is one wing done this is how you can do it the other way what you can do is felt it down much much more so that it's nice and solid really all over really solid and um, and then you can use scissors and cut into it so you could actually cut into the wings and make them make sure you have your wool nicely felted so you're you're actually separating um, the front of this and you, it doesn't stop you anything from um, nothing stopping you to to felt into the individual fingers there again to make them a little bit more distinct but um, that works best when you have felted it nice and firm or you can just hint at those fingers and then you um, attach them to the side of the chicken just the way that you've done it before and this is sort of this this depends on um, on how you want the wing to look whether you want it to stick out like a wave or it could be could be down like that um, that's entirely up to you how you want to um, attach this wing it could be sticking out to the side like she's waving at you or maybe it's down by the side and um, felt that on exactly how you felt it on the tail <clears throat> and then I'm going to give you some homework so next time when we get together my chicken will have the second wing and it will also be um, coloured in, in all around in that um, in that um, muted orange colour. So that is the home for homework for next week to get her coloured in um, into into that um, um, final top colour that she will he or she will have. Mine seems to have turned into a cockerel. So um, I'm not convinced about this tail, but I'm sure you will find much nicer varieties to make um, um, a dignified <laughs> a dignified cockerel tail maybe this needs to be so much shorter or maybe you need to just uh, needle felt something else over it like um like this maybe I'm probably gonna make it even worse now we have got a um there's different colors this is by the way this is our Australian merino which is also in the sub club where you get 20% off if you're a subscriber and um, you could use this is the flower garden so maybe you could cover it up um, a bit more so that you've got so it comes more from from the from the body rather than like a <laughs> like it's shooting out of a pipe <laughs> okay um, but anyway this is um, let's let's just look at the chicken where, where how it's meant to be okay and the great thing about needle felting is you can take this off again so it's not as if it needs to stay there i'm not even going to show you anymore so this is um the little tail on her and you can also point it up by um just felting underneath it of course um and the great thing about needle felting is if it's not right just take it off and do it again there you go i I much like i much prefer this tail um so i think i might have to do a little bit of an operation on um on this um on this unfortunate cock <laughs> cock <laughs> i think it would be all right if it was like that <laughs> okay not i think we're we've exhausted um all all the sensible um, conversation here so I think it's probably best if I um, leave you to it now there is a part three which is coming up uh, it's coming up next Tuesday standing chicken part three so tune in for that and in the meantime um, thank you for watching thank thank you for giving us the thumbs up um, and I will see you in um, yeah, I will see you in a week or maybe on Thursday when you're watching this for the first time. So thank you very much and um, take care, everybody. Bye.